Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, I will. <laughs> I will tell you, you something about testing network interactions in Python. And small disclaimer: it's only about mocking stuff because we have only thirty minutes, and real network will take much more time. So let's start. I am a tech lead in Kiwi.com. I live in Prague, Czech Republic. Initially, I graduated as a security specialist. I do Python since 2010, I believe, something like this. And I maintain a couple of open source libraries, like Django Money. Okay, so here is a, an overview of the talk. Uh, firstly, I will tell you about some context, about the project that will serve as an example. Then we will speak about mocked networks and then some real examples how you could apply these practices. So uh, our case study is about like, uh, booking flights. And for example, we started these projects uh, five years ago and it's huge monolith and it's really hard to maintain. So it's ugly, it's big and it's not maintainable. And we decided to go microservices, right? We can't avoid this picture when we speak about microservices. So when you want to move to microservices, you usually uh, look for some part of your code that could be extracted. And in our case, it's exchange rates. So when you uh, separate something, you will have some network calls between two applications. So we have booking and we have this beautiful, nice exchange rates application and the interact over network. Okay. We work with Python 3.7, we use Flask and Connexion, SQL Alchemy, Postgres, and PyTest. So let's check out the code. We have two models, transactions and exchange rates. So they are pretty simple, pretty dumb, but they could work as an example. And we need to store transactions in our database. So uh, we need to store it in Euro as well, so that's why we need exchange rates. We call our small module a function from this module and we use it uh, with SQL Alchemy to save some data in the, into the database. And our exchange rates are pretty simple. We get data from the database, make simple conversion, and that's it. We have some amount in euro as an output. So how can we test it in a really straightforward way? We can start with uh, some factory for database uh, fixture. I mean, like to, you, you need to store some rates in the in the database, and then we just call safe transaction then we verify that it's saved correctly, everything is converted, stuff like this. And if we don't know how to uh, convert some currency, it should raise an error. So let's cut the stuff out. This should be really lovely application. Let's uh, start with synchronous code. Let's imagine that we will work with some external service and we need to make some requests to it. So it's pretty simple. We need some JSON from endpoint somewhere. For the sake of the example, it will be on the local host. And we are checking if the request is okay and if it's uh, an error, then we need to check the detail and write the same error and return this small. 
Okay, let's pretend that this code just do does not exist and write some ad hoc tests. Pretty simple. The most simplest approach is to mock everything and here we're just mocking uh, this function that we had and we just return decimal value. And for the uh, error case, we raise an exception. We can make it more configurable and we can put this logic into separate fixture, create some dynamic configuration, stuff like this, and use it in this way instead. Or we can work with uh, markers in PyTest and put this logic into a separate function and check if such uh, some marker exists on the test. And if it is exist, then call it. So it will work in the same way, but it's differently. Uh, it's uh, arranged a bit differently. So uh, let's try uh, asynchronous version as well. So it could look like this. It's pretty much the same logic as with requests, but with new async await syntax. We check JSON for some data and we return result. In case of error, we raise an exception. So in asynchronous uh, variant, it will be pretty much the same, but we need to call await on it. So if you want to apply mocks to uh, asynchronous code, you can use uh, PyTest async IO and replace your uh, functions with coroutines. So it's pretty much the same as we had with regular mocks, but it should be a coroutine. And it should be a coroutine object as a return value here. And it's the same, but we need to collaborate in our tests. And the same goes for exceptions. Okay, uh, these kind of tests are good if you can afford to say, I don't care uh, what this code part does internally. I just assume that it should return this data in this situation. I only check if code works in this part uh, and this part will provide this interface. So you are checking the contract. It could work for small and simple uh, parts from time to time, or it could work as a temporary solution, but usually you can't afford yourself this level of confidence their code. So, there are a lot of really nicely done libraries for certain use cases and certain uh, network libraries. For example, responses, super nice, and there is a PyTest plugin for it. The interface is really good. You can apply a lot of things. You can define multiple network calls with this syntax just responses, add, and more uh, keyword arguments. So you can also emulate an exception, or you can build some dynamic stuff with it. So another fixture, and you like, define the logic that will provide some dynamic output, and then you add it as a callback to responses and it will behave in the way you want. And then we use it as we used before our custom small fixtures. So these solutions are really feature rich and they are well supported. However, uh, responses is requests only. It wouldn't work with anything else. And there is a, a really nice universal solution called hook 
and it works with requests and with many more libraries in the, in the same way. So I adjusted it a little bit. So we will have for each test enabled uh, interception and we will disable it in the end of the test as a teardown step. So our, our test would will look pretty much the same, but we will use another fixture and yeah, we can achieve the same stuff we spoke. Our assertions are the same. And with async, uh, with asynchronous version, it works exactly the same way. You don't need to change anything in your uh, test setup. You call the same stuff exactly, and it will work with uh, AOHTP or URL lib3 or requests or uh, HTTP lib. There are many, many of libraries supported. Also, it provides a lot of features like uh, regex matching of headers, query string, path, etc. Responses, delays for AOHTTP, callbacks, and a lot of useful things. So check it out. Okay, so as a summary, Hook is really feature-rich thing. It works with a lot of libraries, but unfortunately, it doesn't support AOHTTP version 3 yet at least as far as I checked it some time ago. As a summary for generic libs, usually they provide really convenient API for certain use cases. You can set up multiple different requests for it, but sometimes it requires more manual work if you want some dynamic behavior of your mocks. And there is another option. Cassettes. The package is called VCR. It's a port of some uh, Ruby library, and there is a PyTest plugin for it. The only thing you need to do is to mark your test with PyTest mark, VCR, and then run your test. On the first call, it will uh, record network interactions to the real service, so you need to be aware about it. And then we can test stuff in the same way we did it before, with generic libraries or some mocks. So let's write actual microservice. Let's use Flask, it's super simple, and we have some predefined traits, nothing else, at least for now. We convert some incoming amount to some currency and we return JSON result and handle some errors. Pretty much small service. After you will run your test first, first time, you will see a cassette was created. It's a YAML file that contains the recording of all network interactions that happened during your test run. It will contain pairs of requests and responses. It has like headers, methods, uh, URI, and response uh, contains body, and some more stuff. So you can choose how to work with it. You can like every time you can uh, record all interactions or you can just record it once and then write an error if some part of your code will make some unexpected network request. So there are different options. Also, it allows you to filter out your secrets from headers, query string, post data. You can define your own filters. And in general, it's really easy to use. You just need to set up this mark. It supports many HTTP clients. It supports uh, AOHTTP requests, URL, lib3, a lot of them. And you can specify multiple requests, like any sequence, anything. But unfortunately, there is no built-in exception emulation. So 
We have generic clips that allows you to do allow you to do this and cassettes. So the best approach, from my point of view, is to combine this and choose whatever you need to test. Okay, let's go for real life examples. Uh, this approach works really nice with API integrations. Let's imagine that we work with MasterCard XML API and we want to build some client. And we want to do it in test-driven development style. So let's define a test, set a record call for it, and try to create a card. Let's imagine that we have this nice interface, really simple. We want to create a card, virtual payment card for 100 euros. And we make some assertions. Then we define some class and we start adding some logic to it. So we define this create card method, we define its interface, we're adding more and more stuff to it. We work with LXML for uh, XML stuff. MasterCard does not provide any WSDL, so you can't use packages like zip. Then we parse some uh, response and return it to the uh, colleague. So our call method contains uh, low-level stuff to build a request, to send it and like check errors, stuff like this. So we use uh, AOHTP under the hood and we build more and more stuff when we are uh, creating more and more methods. So the overall process looks like this. You write a test, uh, you set um, VCR to all record mode, you add some code to uh, make uh, your test green, you run your test with sandbox credentials, it's usually the way to go with API integrations, you adapt your code and test until it works, you make your assertions stronger, and then you repeat until you are confident in this code. Pretty much. Another example. Uh, it could be helpful if you want to refactor some really ugly, really old code that really huge. It contains a lot of side effects. It's tight coupled. Everything depends on the instance state and there are no tests. For example, uh, we actually had something like this. We have a few dozens of different attributes, including mutables, a lot of them. And low data method uh, made like a lot of uh, calls to external APIs, database queries, everything was stored in the instance attributes. Ugly, literally. So uh, we started really, oh, it's ancillary, oh, doesn't matter. Uh, so we started with real life example. So usually this method is called every time we decided to refactor it. We looked inside the code and okay, it doesn't make any uh, bad uh, side effects. So we run it against our production. It's only like get requests for some data. Uh, and we assert the insights of the object. So we have some kind of recorded state of the code you want to refactor. So we have segments, passengers, reservations, flights, everything. Uh, it works like this. Uh, so we recorded the current state. Then the process looks like this. You choose the code you would like you can run on production, record all network interactions for different cases. You need to cover this method like for uh, as much as you can, preferably 100%. And you need to think about cases that you would like to cover because it will help you when you will do refactoring. It will make you confident in your code. You add some detailed assertions as we did about the internal state of the object, 
Then you refactor it and add new tests for refactored code. You repeat it until you are happy with the new code and then go to the higher abstraction level and refactor those interfaces. So, yeah. In the end, we had really only static attributes that we really need that are uh, not mutable and the low data method uh, it, it's, it's calling like some separate functions that are tested separately. Uh, it produces the same results as the old code. We have all these tests for different cases. So we have these contracts fulfilled. Then, yeah, most of the code, most of the new code is stateless. So we don't rely on the uh, instance state. So, yeah, we have the same high-level interface as before. It could work with a different with the rest of the code base. We have much better internal structure and we actually have this. So, how you could use these approaches? It's really nice for splitting monolithic applications because you, you are able to test those interactions that you have after the split. It's really nice for API integrations in TDD style. It's pretty straightforward. And if you need to fake some responses of external APIs, also it could help you with refactoring some tight couple code with a lot of side effects. Okay, let's check the tools list. We used default one, unit test mock, and some helpers around it. PyTest mock, PyTest async IO for asynchronous uh, tests. Oh, sorry. We used responses, hook, VCR for cassettes, and there are some examples of the project that I showed you, so you can check it out. It's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we have just a few questions. I think people yes. were quite interested in the talk. So, uh, are you still writing code? Yeah, not only reviewing and complaining everything. About people. Yes. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So, how big is the your percentage between writing and uh, testing? Maybe uh, writing code, testing code. Uh, reviewing code. Okay, so first of all, I wouldn't split testing code and writing code. For me, it's like the same process. I prefer do to doing uh, of having TDD things, TDD approach in my work, mm -hmm. and I can split it. Yeah. I think if I need some feature, I would like to assert if it will work or not. So I write a test. Then I write some functionality. I don't split it. But if we are talking about reviews and uh, other stuff, I don't know, maybe 40% would go for non-coding things. Depends on the actual state of the project. Sometimes we need more uh, managerial type of activity. Sometimes we need to improve our like features, code base, and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, sure. In the TDD, you not only in the TDD, you always have to think about what you are going to write first. Yeah. So you by TDD you are enforcing the specifications and requirements. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice if you would like to prototype some. Mm, interface that we would like to use because you will have it like a, as an example in your code like a mastercard client dot credit card mm -hmm. it came naturally when you are writing this uh, tests and you are adjusting uh, everything and you know that this interface will work in all these situations you can check it just by running your test suite yeah okay uh, yeah not really a lot of questions 
Uh, I had some in my mind, but uh, we'll probably just call it. A... You can find me on the booth. Yeah. Uh, then, ah, sorry, on your slide. Still, people can find you. Yeah, back there. Uh, thanks to three. Yeah.